And, and like many of you proud Americans, I think we all have the right to carry around a weapon, or at least own one, and have it in the proximity of our homes. Um, the Second Amendment of the Constitution provides us the right to bear arms. And that means simply that you, as an as a American citizen that lives in a property that you own, have the right to carry, well, well to own a weapon. And this weapon isn't because you're going out there to look for trouble or, or to cause a paranoia among, amongst your peers. It's to defend yourself, defend the ones you love, and to truly have um, something that makes you American, which is weaponry. We are a country based on revolution. We have the right to protect um, what we own and what our forefathers have established. Um, one of the major problems that is going on right now is the whole gun craze, which everyone is attacking the current gun laws or trying to implement stricter gun laws. And that all arises from the obvious uh, things you guys have heard on the news, from the uh, Sandy Hook shootings to the Aurora shootings. It's starting to sound like every other word I'm starting to say is with shootings, and that's because there's a lot of uh, mass murders that have been occurring in the last 10 years, even farther than that, starting from Columbine or the uh, Virginia Tech shootings. But these things do not have to, these things don't really span from us having guns being, uh, well, legalized in this nation. These things come from a much deeper rooted problem. But I will get that late, into that later in my speech. Right now what we will speak about is gun policy and how, how it has failed us in the, in the attempts of it being stricter. So according to the New York, by Dan Hinckley of the New York Times, uh, a 10-year ten a ten ban was passed by Congress on September 13, 1994, and was signed into law by President Bill Clinton the same day. The ban only applied to weapons manufactured after the date of the ban's enactment. Now, this just means that there was an assault weapons ban that only attacked weapons being made after, after the, um, the day that the ban was made, meaning that all, all assault weapons made beforehand were still legal, were still allowed, as long as you had the registration in. That means that there was a major loophole that granted people the right to have um, automated weaponry with them. So to start with, how are we going to trust legislators that can't even make a decent, concrete, airtight policy with our lives, with, with the protection of having weapons, if they don't even know that there's major loopholes in their, in their things or whatever? Okay. Another thing I'd like to speak about is how one of the most heavily restricted uh, cities in the nation also has one of the highest crime rates in the U.S. According to Kate Rubin of the Huffington Post, automate, uh, Mayor Bloomberg's legacy is in danger of looking like, a gover like Governor Rockefeller's, just like the Rockefeller drug laws. Policies under May Mayor Bloomberg have proven to be uh, costly. This just means that uh, Mayor Giuliani, I think it was Giuliani, was uh, in charge of making like these huge restrictions on on personal handheld guns, and they have all proven to be really, really costly. The crime rates are going through the roof, and uh, I don't know how you miss. I don't know how you want to implement this. Is like a good time. Pass it around. You pass it around. Or? Go ahead. Yeah. Pass it around. You'll see the spikes during the 1990s, and that's when the gun law was enacted. And that just means that they weren't really working because people found the loopholes in that time. So, uh, let's look up. Well, in the wake of the Newtown shootings, President Obama called for a conversation for people to have mental health 
and this is brought to you by Harold Kopowitz of the Huffington Post. And, and this is a very interesting topic because that's where the real problem problem rises from. It comes from the mental health of our citizens. It's whether some maniac gets a gun and decides to shoot up a whole classroom. It, it starts from some isolated loser taking a gun and shooting up a whole theater. It, it, it spans from that type, those type of people that maybe didn't get the attention in the earlier stages in their lives and, and we didn't really, they didn't know of the support networks that, that we have right now. So I believe in order to protect our American rights, so these legislators will stop attacking our Second, uh, Second Amendment rights, we should really focus on the financial well, I mean on the mental well-being of our citizens. So I implore you to contact the suicidal help uh, hotline if you guys believe that any friend or anyone has these murderous thoughts or suicidal thoughts because when a gun gets involved that's when things get serious. And here's a quote from that's right on the front page of suicide.com. Sometimes depression and suicidal thoughts contain a component component of upset and anger towards the world and the people in it. And that's where all these major shootings come from, from that component of anger. So I implore you to write to your senators, keep your constitutional rights, and, and really target mental health, because that's the best solution for all the violence that has been going on in the last 10 years. We have the right to defend ourselves and the, the ones we love and to preserve their lives as well. That is it.